little bit of resistance, and this is the physics of skateboarding. So when you kick, you create a frictional force between your foot and the ground that will oppose the friction on the wheels. That's what makes you go forward. If you add any extra friction, you'll stop. As shown here, Josh Ju creates an extra force of friction by pushing his back tail to the ground. This causes him to stop. When the wheels are turned sideways, there's more friction because there aren't ball bearings to help them spin. During a hippie jump, your inertia moving forward will not be affected by jumping straight up in the air. This is true for any type of hippie jump, no matter what you're going over. As a skateboarder, one of the first tricks you're going to want to learn is the ollie. When doing an ollie, the initial launch comes from the stamp of your back foot but the air comes from the friction of your, your front foot creates with the board. Once you're in the air, the force of gravity pulls you back down. The ollie can be a very frustrating trick and it takes time to learn. As chem phys alum Michael Loger is showing us here, there's no uh, friction involved during ollieing on a scooter. As you get better at the ollie, you can begin to take it over higher and higher obstacles. So a kickflip is basically the same as an ollie, but you're going to slide your foot to the side so that you're creating a force that will make the board twir like twist on its axis. The goal is to apply a force of friction to the upper left side of the board, which will send the board spin. So an underflip is doing a kickflip, and then mid-kickflip you add a force that's exerting the rotation of the kickflip to make it rotate back the other way. The heel flip is the same as the kick flip, except it's in the other direction. You're pushing outwards instead of pushing inwards. The key to this trick is to start with your toe hanging off the edge so that you can catch the side of the board easier and send it spinning. And make sure your shoes are tied. As you increase the force of friction exerted with your foot, you can get the board to do more than one rotation. If you exert an additional force on the tail end, try and twist your body as well. You will go spinning with the board into a 180 flip. When you exert more force with your legs, you perform more rotations on the board. Double. Triple. Quadruple. During a quadruple kickflip, which is the most anyone's ever done, the board feels about 9.16 Gs while it's rotating. To do a pop shove it, you push your back foot horizontal to the back of the board on the tail, which sends it flying along its horizontal axis. The pop shove it is a fairly simple maneuver, but don't tell these guys. Since the pop shove is one of the most basic tricks in skateboarding, there are many different variations you can do, such as nollie 360 shove it's and big spin flips. If you push hard enough, you can get to rotate more, such as this 540 shove it. As you apply more force in different directions, you can get the boards to do harder and cooler tricks. For this video kickflip, you exert a force with your back foot while also applying a force of friction with your front foot, which sends the board spinning on both axes at once. For this underflip, you exert one force underneath the board to send it spinning. If you push down on the tail the same and exert a stronger force of friction, you will send the board spinning into a double burial flip. An increased force on the tail while keeping the same force of friction on the front foot will result in the 540 flip. If you exert a strong enough force to directly underneath the board, you can complete a 360 underflip. If you increase the force exerted by both of your feet, the board will spin faster on both its axes, resulting in either a 360 double flip or a 360 triple flip. If you apply too much force directly between the wheels, where the board is weakest, you can get it to snap. Having a temper will also result in your board snapping. <laughs> 